You're tuned in to Just One Hot Mom with host Nanika Ansari. Get ready. She's about to bring you that fire, that flavor, that heat, all that passion, and more from around the world and in your neighborhood. Stay tuned. Hey, hotties, it's Nanika and Sari, and you are tuned into Just One Hot Mom. It is a beautiful day in the neighborhood. We are rounding out summer. The kids are back in school, thank God. And it is just gorgeous everywhere I'm going because I can finally relax <laughs> and I worry about my electric bill going up or my refrigerator being left open or my grocery bill. I'm just so extremely excited for that. I want to give a great big shout out to those Lutheran East Falcons today. Today is game day. As you know, my son Jamil is playing. So shout out to those Lutheran East Falcons. You guys got this in the bag. And I also want to shout out Pause and Play. Congratulations uh, to Teresa for starting Pause and Play. It's uh, your premier doggy daycare in downtown Cleveland. So shout out to her. Sparky will be in attendance. <laughs> we are ready. But today I am on and I am ready to bring you that fire, that flavor, that heat with my girls Kelly and Jasmine of the Lee Esther girls. Hi, Kelly. Hey, 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 Jasmine. Are you in there? Jasmine's calling in. Hey, Jasmine. Hey, everybody. How are you? I'm good. How are you guys doing? I'm good. So how's the weather where you're at? Oh, it's nice. We actually sitting outside for a barbecue. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. <laughs> I always tell people, like, you know, it's a beautiful it day when you wake up in the morning, but it's extra special when it's nice and sunny or when you got that cool vibe and breeze. I, I love it. So I'm excited to be talking to you girls this evening about building and networking. Um, if you guys, you guys know me a little bit, I work with like a lot of maternal figures and yeah. we know that women are taking over. Like all moms are, this stay at home moms that are building businesses, this working moms that are building businesses. We're just building businesses yeah. everywhere. Yeah. And so I think it's important right. that we learn to network and brand ourselves and market ourselves. So I wanted you guys to explain to the audience, like what's the story behind the Lee Esther's girl? Jasmine was just explaining that last night. I think she's ready for you. All right, Jasmine, what is it? <laughs> okay, it all started um, after our uncle died, um, Uncle Lee. I was sitting at home, and I was telling Kelly the cousins should do something. We should start a business in remembrance of him, and that's how it got started. And so was he a businessman, or was he business-minded? Both. Um he actually started our own family park. And so he worked along trying to get grants started. And what other, what other jobs did he do, Kelly? He sold um, nani juice. Yep. He, um, <laughs> Aloe vera juice. <laughs> <laughs> you name it, he did it. He even, like, before we even heard of, of the word crowdfunding, mm -hmm. he was a crowdfunder. Really? <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Because there was a guy in Painesville who was looking to start a, start a restaurant, open up a restaurant. And he helped him. And so he you was know? just an all-around businessman. So why yeah, was this particular uncle? Like, what made you guys want to keep his legacy alive? Well, for me, he didn't have any children. So mm -hmm. we were really close to him. Jazz got a, a chance to really know him more than I did because in, um, what year did he move back down there? In 92, he moved back down to Mississippi area. And she really got a chance to know him and finish growing up. And, you know, he would take her. Where was, what was your favorite restaurant you guys always went to go? You always went yeah, to. He, he always he always took me to IHOP. <laughs> I always took her to IHOP and <laughs> Huddle um, House, Barn Hill. Oh, no, Barn my, Hill. I don't know if you guys know about that. No, what's Barn Hill? <laughs> Barn Hill I'm a was foodie. all in Southern states where it was a buffet mm. that he wanted to go to every Sunday. <laughs> Mm -mm -mm. So we, we we would go and we would talk about different things. And one of my favorite memories about him is when I would come home from college, he would pick me up and he would say, what you selling now? Because I will always have a bag of goodies. I will sell polo <laughs> shirts, purses, <laughs> hair, I um, know that's cap, right. everything, belts. And he was like, you got something new? What you selling now? <laughs> and so to keep so his that's legacy. That's how that started. That's amazing. You right, know what keep I'm his saying? legacy. And, well, because yeah. it's so happy to see, you know, people in our family doing stuff to start their own businesses or trying to get ahead. And see, that's the thing that we think, you know, you have to start it in your own family. So often we get lost and we want to do it on our own and we don't think that we need anybody. But to know that there was somebody that planted a seed yeah. 
in your family that, you know, be business minded. Think about starting something so that you can leave a legacy. Mm -hmm. And people who don't know, like, legacies can be left, like, knowledge is legacy. Yeah. And so yeah. when you leave that, right. you allow other people to explore. That's amazing. Yeah. So yeah. kudos. To, okay, Uncle Lee. We're going to call him yeah. Uncle Lee. That's right. <laughs> it's, it's funny that I had him as a, as a younger child and Jasmine had him as, as an older individual growing up to be an adult. <laughs> So we both got yeah. a chance to share them as well as our other cousins that, you know, live in, in the Mississippi area. And, you know, even when you, when you call and say, hey, Uncle Lee, I need help with this or help with that. He was always he was there. Well. He was there. Now, are you two the only cousins that participate in the Lee Esther's girls or are there more? I would say right now there's it's just the two of us right now. But in a little bit, it's, it's going to be more You're bringing in the more. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. I know bringing yeah. them heavy hitters. <laughs> So I want to start asking you guys some questions about marketing and networking and stuff. So, um, so often I think we forget like building connections make a difference and stuff like that. But not every connection is a beneficial connection. Like, you know, sometimes mm -hmm. it's a, listen, mm -hmm. how do you determine which connections when you're networking are beneficial? <laughs> well, I'm a, I'm a little bit different than Kelly, I think. <clears throat> so Are you going to rip the bandaid off, Jasmine? Yeah, go if ahead because that's I the type of person you, I am. Yeah, rip it up. If, if if I approach you and your spirit is not right, I won't even socialize with you. Mm -hmm. That's just how I am. And, I tell people, it's a you know, So you know how, like in school, everybody start off with an A. Everybody doesn't start off with an A with me. You start off as, as a, with an F, and then you have to build yourself up. I know. I don't blame you. I think so often, though, that people think like, you know, they want to build a business. They want to network. So they have to tell everybody. Yes, you have to say yes to everything. But in saying right. yes to everything, you actually, you know, say I know to yourself. You, right. But I think you deteriorate your brand as well, because like, it's like you I'm know. telling everybody. Yes. And that you're mixing so many things in together that, you know, who knows what you're really doing. So I think that to determine what's beneficial to you, you have to first know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. I do know that that's mm -hmm. networking one on one. Yeah. <laughs> that you have to know what you're doing. So when you're out here making these connections and you don't find what you find one that's not beneficial, how are you letting them down? Because I think people find it hard. I know a blogger last week was like, how do you tell somebody that you don't want to work with them? Well, well, for me, I'll say, you I know, definitely decline. <laughs> and, and for me, I'll say maybe I can forward your information to someone else. And maybe there's someone else that I could, you know, put you in contact with that type of thing like that. And I think that's that's perfectly fine. Yeah, because I was like, we were going back and forth about it a lot. Like, what if there's a brand that you don't want to work with or yeah. who's not offering you the money that you think you should be getting? Like, how do you say, I don't want to work with you? Because you don't want them to spoil your name with other people. Right. And so because you don't know who they're connected That's to. Right. And they're like, no, she never replied to me. Right. Because I tell you in a heartbeat, I might be good for one to be like, if I say no and then you keep pressing it, you probably won't hear <laughs> <laughs> you probably won't because to be honest it's like you know I was like if I'm building my brand to look a certain type of way and I know what I want to do and I explain that to you mm -hmm. and our um, our visions don't match up then it's okay we can like still cheer each other on right. we just can't work together in right. that capacity right and so, but when somebody does make a connection that they feel will be that they feel will be beneficial, how are you trying to pull that person in? Because it's like, hey, I met you, and I really want to work with you. You don't want to go all girl crush uh, Wednesday <laughs> on them. How do you say? How do you get them to come in and want to connect with you? For me, I know me. I know we coordinate a meetup. You know, get a chance to meet that person. You know, really talk to them, and you know, see what they're really about. Because a lot of times on Facebook, or, or I should say on social media, they're one way. Um, some people are the same and authentically the same every time you see them, and, and that's cool, but some people are not. So the chance to have that, that person sit in front of you and talking to, talking to them and you're meeting up with them, I think that helps to, you know, form that relationship to see if that's somebody that, that you're compatible with to work with. Let's see. I'm trying to think how I want to say this because, you know, like so I've, I'm trying to get all the way in your brain, you and Jasmine, <laughs> figure out how y'all do this. But when you're marketing, <laughs> when you're marketing yourself to someone, what are the key points you want to hit on? Like, well, name three key points you want to hit on that I want to sell myself to you. What do I want to tell you? You can go first, Jeff. It was going in and out. Can you hear me, Jasmine? Do you need me to repeat it? Yeah, can you repeat yeah, it? Yes, me? I can. 
what are if when you're marketing yourself so you get this sit down meeting with the person that you want to how do you what's three key tips that you can use to market yourself to just okay. wow them with those three things uh -huh. okay. yeah I'm let me your think brain. about that one <laughs> <laughs> let's see well first when I sit down and talk to someone um I start off like on a personal tip mm -hmm. you know to see how their mind is working. Um, let's take the funeral industry, for for example. I'm a licensed funeral director and bomber. So a lot of the events um, that I go to with different colleagues, and I try to see if I want to maybe do contract work for them. Mm -hmm. I start talking to them. I see what some of their goals are. Um, I would give them a scenario and see how they would handle the situation. Usually when you do that, you can tell if you want to work with them or not. Mm -hmm. um, mm, let's see what else. Because I'm thinking in the back of my mind, I didn't know you were a funeral director. Look at you. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, yeah. I did just touch on What, this. my Kelly didn't tell you that? No, but I want to know, how, is Aretha Franklin's funeral still going on right now? <laughs> it, it just ended about ended. 30 minutes ago. Uh, what what are you the funeral away? Okay, so we gonna get back to that because I have another question. Now you shouldn't have brought that up. Now I got another question. See, <laughs> but I'm thinking in my mind because I'm thinking like um, so I work for a business school as well, and so they always tell us those 30 second elevator speeches. Like you're just supposed to have that down pack. But if I'm sitting across from you, it's more than 30 seconds. What should I be telling right. you about myself that you that will leave an impact on you? What are those things? Like I want to read my resume to you because I can hand that to you, but I want you to meet me, my personality. What should I be telling you? Me, I think that I you should know. be. You got some? I'm sorry. No, I was about to say I don't know because usually before the person even sit down, you can tell if. You know, by looking like, in their eyes and their spirit, if Jasmine it's right. Is big on vibes. What are you saying, <laughs> Kelly? She said eyeball them. So that's a tip, you guys. Eyeball them. Like, make, and you do check people out. Like, people will say you that, do. you know, you that we're not vain enough to be like, the look that you have will uh, deter me from working with you. But it is. Like, and I've learned that a lot in business that depending on who you work with and what you want to do, mm -hmm. your look makes a difference. Yeah. So yeah. I think um, Tiana I was, is a hairdresser I met today, and I was telling her, like I want to switch hairdressers but if I come to you and your hair not done and you a hairdresser I'm not going to be really feeling your vibe <laughs> because your hair not done like you know what I'm saying so that the business that you're in you have to actually yeah. be active in it and so that's what I was asking and and then and for me it's with the hair because we do have uh besides we have the business networking groups up under Lee Esther's we do have in Delhi hair up under Lee Esther's banner okay so within Delhi hair I know that I need to look right if I'm trying to so you hear my hair is looking like raggedy well, you're not going to want to buy it mm -hmm. and you know I try to make sure I'm always you know dressed appropriately um, my hair looks appropriate you know it's, it's, it's intact it looks good mm -hmm. because we do have good hair um, <laughs> but going back to but going back to the other side of the question whereas what do you say in that 30 second elevator, elevator speech you need to let them know like quickly kind of what it is that you do but not all the way because you want to leave a space in there so they can ask you hey what do you do um so normally for me when i'm meeting someone i, I come up and i ask them so what, what do you like to do you know i ask them those type of questions and get a feel that way you know rather than just going for for a straight vibe because that's when she's ready to cut you she done with you she don't like how you vibe and she ain't even gonna mess with you but you know it's because you can read some people's energy like if i can feel yeah, you your can. energy and you it's kind of like eh. you can like, but but what about that person having an off day that day? You're right. So, uh, yeah, if you're having an off day, but yeah. I don't know. Like, hopefully the time that I meet you, you be on. Like, <laughs> right. It, it, hopefully you're all the way on because, you know, that... I don't know. I feel like... Um, and like I feel like I bring a lot of energy to the table so if someone can't match my energy it's mm -hmm. kind of like uh, it won't be fun for either one of us mm -hmm. and I'm like if I'm doing something that right. I enjoy and I love and I'm trying to explain it to you mm -hmm. if you can't match that creativity that um uh, what do we call it? I forgot, Robin. Uh, if you can't match what I'm trying to do, then it won't. Yeah, your energy. So if you if we can't match up, it'll be kind of dead in the water. Like I'll be doing everything, and you may be bringing something to the table too, but it just won't be a 
great connection Mm -hmm. and like Mm -hmm. in business i think you really need to have a great connection like Mm -hmm. i need to be able to market me and if i'm selling me to you and you're going to sell me eventually you got to be able to sell me the way i would sell me when i'm not around right so my thing is i my thing is i try not to sell you upon meeting you first because that's not i'm not about selling you i want to get to know who you are and build that relationship and see if there's something that you know we can use there support each other with so like i said i I go back and i'll say you know so like what do you like to do and ask the person what are their interests you know that type of thing and let them know what i like to do and you know you you trade information going back and forth and you're, you're building a solid conversation at that point and then you can you know let them know hey this is what i have going on with my company this is the company that i represent this is what we like to do within our company you know and they're bouncing their ideas back you you know, back to you about what they do in their company as well. So to keep that camaraderie going and, you know, that communication, that help, I, that, that's, to me, that's what helps build the relationships and mm-hmm. let you know if that's somebody I want to work with, um, if that's somebody I want to do a collaboration with, you know, it might even be something like a small gesture that somebody does that might even help to push me over a little bit, a lo- over a little bit. I met with a, a young lady yesterday and um, there was something that she did. I'm like, oh my gosh, my mom does the same thing. So right then and there, I have an affinity for her because of what she did. She didn't know my mom. She doesn't know mm-hmm. her. Um, and then we, you know, the conversation was much more involved, much more, you know, thoughtful at that point. You know, we shared a lot of information back and forth, and we, we just really were vibing on the on the so conversation. So you need to do that thing that makes you memorable because I think when you're at a networking event, yeah, especially if you're just handing like we're visit car, you know business oh, no. cards and we're walking around and we're shaking hands. When you're at a networking event, if you don't do that thing that makes you memorable, people you'll be just another business card that I'm going to throw in my drawer. But I say I've been to some events where it's like I remember so and so they were super dope. Let yeah. me go to your Instagram and follow you yeah. real quick. Like I've met people like that that I want to engage with. Yeah. Now if I find out later on I'm gonna unfollow you like if he was just like faking the funk <laughs> right right, See, right that's like, probably right. more jasmine speed like yeah you know if I if we don't vibe <laughs> I'll unfollow you I want your vibe on my page uh <laughs> right but this is the thing I think I've discovered a lot and that networking can be overwhelming especially for oh, yeah. a person who's just starting out as mm-hmm. an entrepreneur who doesn't really know like they know what they do and they can be so passionate about it but they can't put it into words for and try to explain it at a networking event it's just too much how can we get them to like stress less they'll get that anxiety to be lower when they're at these events okay so i think what helps the most is you got to have some type of icebreaker you have to have some type of event to where we're we're making you engage with the other person that's there in the room with you making you feel comfortable enough to engage with the other person and i think icebreakers are really great and you know i was just speaking yesterday about different things something that we're going to be trying out at the event coming up in september and you know i'll let you guys all know when you get there (laughs) but i think it's going to be something that's very helpful to help motivate you and push you guys towards one another to see hey you have this going on i have that going on oh wow i didn't know that's what you do because there's some people that you know and you really don't know what all that they do you may know them for one thing but they may have five six seven other things that they do Mm -hmm. um so that's something that we're going to be trying out at the event regarding on the networking portion of it to help you know because when you're coming into a room full of people and it's your first time and that anxiety level is high and you're like your hands are all sweaty you got business cards in your right pocket normally and you're waiting to put some more in your left pocket <laughs> and then you're shy about trying to pass out that pass out that first business card because it's like am i being pushy and am i being too forward you know that type of that, that those feelings can help damper your energy that you're putting out you know towards everybody but if you don't think about those things and you go into it with more auth- being authentically yourself mm-hmm. and you know just showing up to have a good time and trying to meet people and getting to know who people are I think you have a better chance of having a better networking experience and I'm so glad you said that because I think some people think networking is all business but if you're mm-hmm. authentically true to yourself you will have a good time and that will show and what you're doing like it'll come across like as a natural vibe and it won't be so stiff yeah like, you know because I do work at a business school oftentimes I see people in those suits and they're all stiff and they're like just waiting to hand you that card and yeah. it's like calm down <laughs> it's gonna be okay you know and i get it when it's your first time out because you don't know how people are going to receive you yeah. if they're gonna uh, vibe. Yeah. that's over vibing all the time i'm like you know i ain't everybody's cup of tea but that's because i'm tequila and then you know <laughs> all right tequila all 
<laughs> but that's just what it is. <laughs> and so, but I, so what can a person do before they get to the event though? Cause I'm at home, I'm getting dressed. I got my makeup on. I got my business cards. I'm about to walk out the door. What can they do before they leave the house to help encourage themselves? You got that one, Jazz? Are we able to hear? hear? Oh yeah, I heard it. Um, yeah, I mean, it's something that I do every morning before I even go to work. Or uh, if I'm getting ready to work a service and I got to be dealing with people all day. Look in the mirror, say, you got this, you are beautiful, you are smart. The people you meet today, maybe they can help you further yourself in life and, and keep it moving. See, my thing is, is I play um, Rihanna Rockstar. Even before I come in here, like Robin seen me pull up to her before. Like that's just <laughs> right, like, and that's me. I had my I had myself up. Yeah, like I'm like my own right. man, Like I'm in the car, like you a rock star. Like yeah. and I do the air guitar and everything. <laughs> like I think people have followed me for a while. Like she really does. Like I was like I'm my own hype man. And then if I bring my baby girl and she hypes me up even more, so now it's She's like so oh cute. I'm really pumped. Now y'all about to get the mic drop today. And so I was just wondering like. <laughs> <laughs> what do other people do at home? Because, you know, it's especially when you're new, when you're new to something. Like, I know a lot of ladies that are stepping out on faith that are like, okay, I'm going to go home yeah. and homeschool my kid, but I still need to make an income. And so they decide to start these businesses, but you're stepping out and doing something you've never done before. You have normally work a nine to five or you've been a stay at home mom. Yeah. So I'm speaking to that lady like, hey, you got this. You can do this. What would you say, though, about building your tribe? Like, what should those people around you be encouraging and influencing you to do? What are you doing to build that tribe up? Well, for me, to, to build a tribe, you're looking for somebody that's going to take you out of your comfort zone. And I have found quite a few ladies, <laughs> ladies, <laughs> who have done just so. Because I'm one that I can go to an event. We well, used to could go to an event and you know meet a couple people and go home and I'm I'm okay, but no, not now, no. What what what, what you have to be intentional about certain things. Well, what's your intent? Five. You said intent. That's my new what's, word. What's your what's your intent about going to the event? Why are you going? What's your purpose of going? Why are you going to the event? You're mm -hmm. going to meet people. You're just going to mingle. You're just going to just chill. And what you, are you going for? So that's why I told people, I was like, this is like, like last year was like my year of yes. Like I was just going to say yes to everything and show up every event. And then I was like, oh my God, I'm at all these places and <laughs> I'm so exhausted. I don't even know why I'm here. You like put that out I want to encourage you, but I also want to get some sleep. And mm -hmm. so going mm -hmm. into this next season, I was like, I'm going to be intentional and I'm not going to be afraid to say no, because this doesn't really serve a purpose for what I'm trying to do. And if people respect you, they'll respect that mm -hmm. response Mm -hmm. Like I'm, I can support you. Like maybe I can buy a ticket and send yeah, someone else. That's right. But it's not really what I want to do. So, but mentioning that, how can people kind of define what they want to do in their networking? Because you know, there's always like, what's your mission statement, or what is it? You know, uh, how are you going to get out there and tell people to do? How can people kind of fine tweak that? Because I know even for mine, I was like, I want to help parents be better and live their best lives, and that's so broad. That's very broad. It's very broad. You and will so, be exhausted. <laughs> and let me. Tell y'all, last year I was. I was like, I became the queen of the 10 minute power nap, but I was still tired. Okay. How can you guys help people when they're starting to learn to market themselves to get that statement in there that's exact so that we can say, this is your mission? Well, one thing I think you're going to have to keep tweaking it. It's not going to be the same thing from the from from Drum Street. It's not. You're going to go in with one thing thinking, OK, so we're about, you know, connecting other to services and, you know, providing quality service, um, you know, having luxury products, having a given a giving a luxury experience. And, you know, you have all that information sitting in front of you and you want to put that out there. But then as you go along in the process and you, you know, you know, see how those different relationships form and how your business is forming because of those relationships that, that are, you know, connected with you, you know, that starts to change. You may want to say we give you an, a luxury experience, you know, and leave it at that. And that's it. What I did, though, that. like, and I don't know, I just recommend this to other people. Somebody dropped this to me. They were like, what you should do is go and follow and check out what other people that you want to be like, people that you admire in the business that you're doing. See what they're doing and yeah. see how, what yeah. they look like. Yeah. And then, 
And when I did that, I was like, oh, girl, you've been kind of messy over this last year. Like my thoughts and stuff were everywhere. And so when I started to follow other mommy bloggers or mm -hmm. other mommy podcasters, what they were doing, I was like, OK, you don't copy people's work. Let's be no, clear about no. that. <laughs> we don't have we don't have right. to take that. Right. Approach. You no. don't copy people's work, but no. you can admire and say, yeah. oh, OK, how did I tweak that? And so. Mm -hmm. When you guys are offering these networking events. So what can, well, let me ask this. What can we <laughs> expect at this event that's coming up? You want to go first, Jazz, and I'll tag in? Mm -hmm. I want you to go first. Okay. <laughs> so what they can expect at this event, because it's unlike any other, in my opinion. That's why it's very, it is very unique. It's very unique how we have it set up. So when you come into NOAA's, and NOAA's is already a premier center, it's very conducive for invoking, you know, connections with people because of the way that it's set up. And that's a good thing that's going to help, you know, with that anxiety possibly mm -hmm. as well, too, and to make you feel a little bit more comfortable and with that positive energy going. So we have a vendor hall set up. Um, our vendors, unlike any other event that I've been to in a while, the vendors will have an opportunity to talk about their why, why they're in business. Why do they choose to do this business and tell, you know, and then express where they see their business going with the next five years. And mm -hmm. a couple of people have told me, I'm kind of scared about saying, I said, I'll hold your hand. I'm mm -hmm. there. I'll hold your hand because I understand that. Mm -hmm. I understand that. It, it is. You can have a lot of anxiety. You get nervous. You know, you're not quite sure how to read your crowd sometimes. Mm -hmm. I get that. And then. We have Ivanka, Ivanka Hall opening up as a keynote speaker. She's going to be come out. Right. <laughs> She's going to come out with guns blazing and everything and hype you up, get you motivated as an entrepreneur and tell you how you should be conducting yourself, conducting your business. And like uh, an example that she used, and I will often use it because it is so true. I have experiences myself. You're open to nine o'clock. You have been slow all day. At 7.30, you want to leave. 7.30, you're getting ready to walk out. There's a customer coming. What do you do? Do you stay there or do you say, oh, we closed for today? Some people will say, oh, I'm closed already. But your sign says 9 o'clock. You don't know what I was coming in there to buy. You don't know. Mm -hmm. To me, that's not being, being a good business person. That's not good business at all. You need to service the people that you signed up to say, hey, I'm here for you. Well, be there for them. You know, those are your hours. Um, then we have... Um, Marcus Teague talking about merchant services and what question and answers and telling you where to go, how to sign up stuff, because sometimes a lot of people don't understand. We don't always have to use Square Page. We don't always have to use PayPal because sometimes those fees can eat you up. So sometimes when you're in business starting out, some, some banks won't touch you for two years to give you a merchant service account. You know, and how many of us know that? You know, there's a lot of work that you got to do to figure out where you oh, need to go. And he's there to help you with that. He's coming up for Orlando for that. Then we have Mr. Black Friday himself. How many of us know somebody that made $100,000 in one day? Right. Mr. Ellery? Yeah. Right. Okay. How many, how, many, how many of us know somebody <laughs> that did that? So you're going to have a chance to, you know, pick his brain and, and hear what he has to say. Um, <laughs> and then you have <laughs> then you have Shannon Cavertes, who's in from North Olmstead, talking about branding and marketing, how, telling you how to design your website. And she's super duper. She's a powerhouse at doing that. Um, telling you how to design your website, what what you what kind what type of content you should have on it. Going even into del delving into the what type of what type of colors you need to have because certain colors invoke certain types of energies and feelings. You know, they're I'm going so with that vibe glad again. Say, like people yeah. don't understand that. Like, it, it really takes does. A whole yeah. lot of stuff that you know. You behind yeah. the scenes, people just think like, "Oh, it's a pretty website," right. and it's no. like, "No, I had to think about the yeah. colors, the font, yeah. the wording on it, the picture that was yeah. on the front page, like something that would grab your attention but That's not be right. offensive." That's right. And so people don't think about that. And you have business. a beautiful website, and I know who helped Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank <Kudos>. you. <laughs> and then um, we'll also have like a huge question and answer panel, and the attendees will leave with tons of downloads tons of downloads. We have the Secretary of State of Ohio office coming in. They're going to be there to give us information, tell you how to, where you need to go to sign up for this, where you need to go to to apply for that, you know, your LLC, how to get grants, how to get help from the SBA. They're going to be in there, you know, helping us to facilitate and move forward and help everybody grow. That is amazing. Yes, because you is. So often, wait, starting a business is overwhelming. Yes, it is. And realizing that you are a brand and that you're the face, like everything you do yeah, is your business that's now, right. that can be a bit overwhelming. I that's know right. for sure. That's right. <laughs> yeah, because the thing is, like we were saying, I think I got this from Nobles um, um, when I was talking with him. And I think someone else mentioned this, too, when I went to an event. Your brand is you. You mm -hmm. are your brand. People see you first before they even know what you're selling. 
Yes, and then the, so the your face is what people <laughs> will remember. People yeah. know. I remember uh, Robin for a long when I just turned in the podcast episodes, and for her father contacted me and was like, "We want to know what you look like. They want to know what a hot mom <laughs> looks like." And I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> I was like, "I could be a hot mess sometimes too, so you gotta wait and see what you get on either side. I could be really cute, or I could be a mess. I could be people mm-hmm. at Walmart on occasion." Then um, also the attendees will also receive quarterly communications from us. So there's so that's a follow up. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Definitely doing that. And then we have something that's very innovative that's going to be coming up for them that they will experience while at the event. And thanks to Sharita for that. You know, I can't <laughs> give away everything. Um, <laughs> so you have to be there to find out what it is. That's going to be that's a great, great tool to use. And then also we have dinner and live jazz concert. You know, I know because it's Hub's group. Right? It's Hub's group. Yeah, favorite our friend. Yeah. I'm so excited. Our friend, about Mr. This. Hubbard. Right. Jay? <laughs> Right. So I'm excited for this event because yeah. there's a lot going on in the city yeah. right now and there's so much information and that information can be overwhelming mm-hmm. and there are, sometimes aren't opportunities for you to ask questions mm-hmm. or to get feedback or to learn like you having the Secretary of State of Ohio there. That's amazing yeah. because a lot of times you they you go to the website and you're like oh it's too Which one much. do I click on? Do I mm-hmm. click on start a business? Do I want to click on add to something I already have going on? Do I want to do doing business ads? What do I want? Which one do I want to choose first? And sometimes you call and then us being busy, you know, most of the times we're calling when they're already gone. And then they shut down their website, like, I think, like at 11 o'clock at night. So if you, you know, miss that now, you've got to wait till the next day. And so it's, it's a lot of different things that we may not know the intricate parts of how things work. And, you know, like I said, they'll be there to help guide us. And there's going to be other couple of different, you know, nuggets and, you know, um, exclusive groups that are going to be there to help push us. So you oh, have to come out to see, to see what it is. It's, <laughs> to it's just going to, how, how the kids say, it's going to be lit. It's going to be lit. It's going to be lit. <laughs> it's going to be lit. <laughs> I'm on with Kelly and Jasmine, the Lee Esther's girl. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to still pick their brains and find out what we can be doing to network and market ourselves a little better. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hey, hotties. Welcome back. You are tuned in to Just One Hot Mom, and I am on with the Lee Esther's girl, and we are talking networking and branding. And so you mamas, if you are out there and you are thinking of taking a leap of faith and starting your own business or launching your another project or something, we are giving you some details on how you can do that. And they have an event coming up that you will want to be a part of because mm-hmm. you need these life lessons, ladies. Let's be real. So I told them when we came back on, I wanted to ask you guys about family life, though, because we as women and you guys I'm throwing the men in there too but this mostly falls on the ladies is when you're just when you decide to become an entrepreneur as a mother so you have a household to take care of how <laughs> how do you guys vibe with that how are you guys still getting out there networking yet you know and taking care of home well jazz got it easier than me <laughs> <laughs> right jazz is still single <laughs> And no children. So she got it easy. So when she want to jump and go somewhere, she can just jump and go. Mm-hmm. Um, but for me, um, I have to schedule stuff. If you saw my calendar, you'd be like, really? <laughs> All these different colors? This is for what? That's for that, 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 that. I do a lot of um, colors. <laughs> I do. You have to. You have to. And it's not only that. It's not just children. I, my mom lives with us mm-hmm. at our house. And I love her dearly. And she keeps us going. If it wasn't for her, a lot of stuff wouldn't even get done. I mean, she helps set. She helps. Yeah, she helps set the menu for us. And like, if we're if we're missing something or whatever, you said you need to do so and so on Tuesday. Um, uh, don't you need to set a reminder on your phone? Put it in your phone. Use your phone. Use mm-hmm. your phone. <laughs> I, so I have reminders everywhere and I actually my color code is the red yellow and green light if it's red I haven't touched it yet and I probably should if it's yellow it's probably in the process of getting done if it's green it's done it's a go and so I use mm-hmm. that for everything and my calendar is massive to a point where my sister everybody knows her already <laughs> has forced me to start using a google doc so we can hold each other accountable it's okay. so annoying but it actually works out and so I just want people to understand like I schedule everything like somebody was like oh I want to go to dinner with you we're friends I'm like okay let me put you on the calendar you're mm-hmm. that important I'm mm-hmm. like I am that important but if I don't put it on the calendar I will not show up ask Rob I think was it like two or three weeks ago somebody asked me to do something but they didn't wait for me to put it in my calendar and I just didn't show up because I was like I for- I didn't remember what right. they said and I felt right. you so forget. bad I you put a forget. note on Facebook like hey if you ask me to do something on this date <laughs> 
I remember the date and the time. I just didn't remember what I was asked to do. I was like, please get at me because I don't remember. And mm-hmm. I was like, I didn't hear from the person. I was like, well, it wasn't that important. So, but I think keeping that calendar, especially if you're a yeah. mom on the go, it is so important. And decorate your calendar, ladies, because I have like <laughs> little, because it gets so boring sometimes. Like if I don't decorate that calendar, I get bored. And I'm like, this is just, my life is just full of appointments. <laughs> and so I do, that's why I color code and I decorate to make sure. But I'm glad you mentioned that even the menu plan, like you have to really yeah. organize your life when it you're is. about to step out on faith and just it go is. to business. But let's talk about that, stepping out on faith. Right. Because I believe that that's a (laughs) big component. I'm getting all the way in their brain. I told them. We're going to talk about some a lot of random stuff. She's picking that brain, right, Jess? (laughs) Stepping out on faith. How has your faith played a role in you guys stepping out and taking this chance and doing business? You want to go first, Jess? It plays a a lot. Um, You what I do is I pray about it. Um, I hear a lot of people say they believe that God is a gentleman, you know. So if it's not meant for them to go, if we have door A, it's not meant for them to go through door B. And so I've been operating like that. If I pray about it and everything feel right, it's good to go. Mm-hmm. I know about that. I pray all <laughs> but, the time. <laughs> but if it's not and it keep coming back up, I won't do it. And see, that's the thing. I think sometimes because I, I was on like a couple weeks ago, somebody was like, yeah, people just pray and then they drop stuff. And I was like, well, you know, it says faith without works is it's dead. dead. And so I'm like, I pray right. about it, but I, I I don't just not move. That's I right. just, you know, but I, I don't necessarily move forward and, you know, forge ahead full force. I just, you know, might play around with it a little bit and just see. But if it's not meant for me, I'm cool with that. Like, that's how right. I conduct mm-hmm. business with a lot of people. I'm like, hey, if it's meant for me, it's going to stick with me. It's going to come my way. And there's nothing that anybody else will be able to do to take that away from me. But if it's not meant for me, I'm OK with that, too. And so I was just wondering how you guys' faith played a role in that. Because honestly, I think that's what's missing from some businesses is that we've lost our faith. And so you expecting these great things to happen in business, but you don't have any faith that it's going to happen. Right. You really have to have a plan. You have to learn how to work your plan. You do have to put the work in. Yeah, that's going to be nice. You're going to get tired. And for me, my motto is, is I'm not finished until it's done. You know, I can sleep a little bit later, but... That's that's my thing. I like if I have a task in front of me, I like to get that task finished and get it out of the way. It might be one, two o'clock in the morning. Yeah, I'm still up working on it, and I will. I'll, I'll put my all in it like that. But I know if I put the action behind something, I stay I keep keep grounded in my faith, stay in alignment with what has been dealt to me and what has been given to me to do, and what my purpose is. I know I will be able to be sustained through all of that. And I thank God for Him sustaining me through all this process because you know, like you said, we're moms. Um, I'm lucky to have two adult children right now. My kids are 24 and 20. And we do have some younger ones that came to live with us. My niece and nephew, they're 17 and 15. And, you know, they can give me a run for my money at times. But we all uh, we all are trying to move together. It takes a team to do all this work. Mm-hmm. You can't do this by yourself. It takes a team. My husband push, pitches in. My brothers, they pitch in. Cousins pitch in. It's not just me. There's a lot of help that goes into, you know, making this, making all the cogs move to make this business move and run. You know, it's just not, this is what I'm doing. It's no, not, it takes everybody to make it, to make it go. And they have to have an understanding, hey, this is how Kelly operates. This is how Kelly works. This is how Jazz works. This is how Jazz operates. That's how she works. And you bring those two things together to help make something big, and make something wonderful and keep it moving. And see, I'm really big on giving people credit for what they, because I was like, none of this stuff that I do would be possible without the team behind me. And I was like, I keep a specific set of people behind me and I won't always put them out there and share them with everybody because I want you to still them <laughs> specifically for my team but I think so often we just forget like we that you have to explain what you're doing to the people on your team too I was like I could have yeah. a great vision and I could be creative and stuff but if I don't have my family understanding what I'm trying to do then it's lost like right. who's going to respect what you're trying to do when you can't even explain it to your family so if you follow me on any social media like even down to the five year old she understands like okay you need to put up a video today um, we need to come on mm-hmm. the right and mm-hmm. she will she's mm-hmm. asked for her own segment mm-hmm. on the show mm-hmm. so uh, we're probably going to make that happen because she is 
that entertaining. She's a little firecracker. I like her. I remember the first time I met her, she was like so overwhelmed, but she did so well with modeling and walking that day. I think she was just really ready to go home. Oh, yeah, she was. She was, she tired. was like, I'm over this today. She mm-hmm. wanted to put on those heels. Um, <laughs> that was her main focus. But I think when you involve your family, and this is going back to that, is that you're planting the seed for the next generation to take over. Because uh, I think my sister and I, we do uh, the Young Mommy group, and a girl mm-hmm. contacted her last week and was like, yeah, I'm coming for your job. And my sister was like, I didn't know whether to be flattered or to be scared. And I was like, no, they're supposed to come <clears throat> after us. We're supposed to show it in such a way that they want to aspire to yeah. do that. And so I'm excited to see where our next generation is going to go. Yeah. And like you said, being an inspiration to your children and those around you, that that's that's a wonderful thing. You know, that's something, you know, to admire. It is. Okay, so where, okay, so you're having this conference and it's coming Mm -hmm. up. Where are other places that you would recommend people go to get information about networking and branding and marketing? I suggest, around in this area for me, suggest using Launch House. Launch House is huge. They're there to help you. Um, They do tons of in-kind services. Um, You have... um, I know um, there's, other, there's a couple other things. We have Network Notions that's um, hosted by Catrice, mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm having her help move one over to the east side out here and, and to, to Painesville area so we can get more people involved and get them going to what we need to have an east connection to. <laughs> <laughs> we have that. You have your SBA, Lakeland Community College. They offer tons of free information. I've been to a few classes there, and a lot of times there might be five or six people in a class. I'm like, where are all the people at? And sometimes I've had Jasmine on, you know, listening in and, you know, getting information because, you know, she may be on, on lunch break or something like that, you know, catching information. Um, you so. know I don't be at lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Jasmine well, said she did not take no break. She don't take a break. She's, well, she's helping to listen in and see what's going on and asking questions. And, you know, we're getting, you know, getting fed that way and getting educated that way, too. Um, what other business networks that we have connections with? Um, you have, like I said, the SBA. Mm-hmm. SBA is, is is huge. You know, they're 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 willing to help you. I'm glad you brought in that learning aspects because for me, what I've been doing is like checking out to see what other people are doing in the field that I'm in. If they're offering a class and if I admire them, then why not take their class? But since you brought that up, what do you say to people who are like, "Hey, that's too much money for me to do that"? Like, are you encouraging them to invest in themselves, like spend that money, or are you like, "Okay, you can find another way"? Because the library offers a lot of stuff, but I think doing it with somebody who's doing the, what you want to do is actually a better experience than it going is. to the library and just sitting there. Because you don't know where to start when you go to the library. You don't know where to start. You know, and then you might have a question, you're still lost, and then you still got to circle back around to that because, well, did I answer myself on that question or did I miss that point? You know, I'm kind of, I'm still kind of lost. So having someone to help guide you and help move you forward to your goals is where we come in. And, you know, being available to people and, and being able to connect them with other services is, I think, one of our main goals. Right, Jazz? That's one of our main goals? Yeah, be able to connect people with, yep. with services and be able to help them grow it and is. move forward. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And then you have that component of it. And then also um, with being an entrepreneur, it's, it's, it's time consuming. And then with the, the value that you're getting with us to see your return on what you're purchasing because you know a lot of times as entrepreneurs you just don't have the budget to do too many conferences Mm -hmm. and we are at the end of the year right now and you know we do have specials right now we have a special buy one get one so if you have a team of two people you know afford you know you can get a ticket today for thirty dollars team of two sixty dollars is a typical registration and right now we're doing buy one get one that's on till sunday so we're saving you thirty bucks on a ticket so why not take advantage of that? But like I said, we have tons of downloadable information we're giving you. We have, you have the ability to be in the same room where you have people that have been in the business with longevity, people that are seasoned, that can help you and can guide you and be able to push you forward and connect you with this business, connect you with that business. And, you know, to me, that's, that's, that's worth that it's value. It's all about connection. It's all that value. Mm-hmm. Then we're feeding, we're, we're, you know, don't forget about sustenance. We're feeding you twice. We have, <laughs> we have a continental breakfast that's being sponsored. Then we have Arlene's Catering doing a nice dinner for you. 
You know, then we're going to help you relax to some nice don't, live don't jazz. Don't tell me the food because I will go check the her food, out before the food, that Yes, <laughs> to check her out. Check her out. Check out Arlene right, Skater. Miss Arlene, Arlene is the bomb. Yes, because <laughs> I am like, Robin will tell you, like, I'm like, we're going to eat. We got to go eat somewhere good. She said about a dessert. You're right. Right. You said a dessert yeah, table. Yeah, we do right. have, we have sponsored desserts. We do. We have a oh, dessert okay. sponsor. Who? Out of uh, Cakes by Joan Maria. That's out in my way, out in East Lake, Timberlake area. And I called her up because... You know, I asked, I said, hey, and everybody keeps saying, if you don't ask, you don't know. So I, I, I love asked. sweets. Robin is the sweet. I'm more <laughs> of a give me some steak and some fries. And look at it. Robin is the sweet one. And I'm like, you can add them cakes. I want to eat good. I like I'm just cakes. excited to see. I'm excited to see more people get involved in conferences and networking events like this that can yeah. help push them forward. Yeah. And like you said, if you don't ask, you never know. Yeah. You know, like if you stay afraid, you'll stay stuck. Yeah. And stuck don't get you no know, coins or us. Does that does not collect it a bag. Doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> and so how are we um, keeping people encouraged with their business mojo? Because, you know, there's somebody now who's <laughs> like, I've been in the business for a long time and they've kind of had, you know, they were on a high and now they're in a slump. Is this event recommended for them? And how do we keep them motivated to keep moving forward? Now, that's a jazz question. That's a jazz question. All right, jazz. Did you hear that's that one? That's a jazz question. <laughs> yes, it is. Because that's, that's, one of the, that's one of the reasons that we had when we first started marketing back in June with this. It was like, have you lost your mojo? If you go back and look at our stuff. Mm -hmm. That's one thing she yep, kept pushing out there that, to help you. That's what I said. That's a jazz question. All right, yeah, because jazz. I know a lot of people um, who started doing businesses when we were in college, and some of them were successful, and now it seems like everybody is in a slump. And one, I went to college in Mississippi. I'm from Mississippi. So a lot of things that I've been noticing for them down there, they don't have these kind of opportunities. Hmm. to go to different events like this and no one has stepped out on faith to try to even put an event like this together so yeah this event is an event that people need to come to who, ha who have lost their mojo that's one reason why I was telling Kelly we need to travel with this you know go mm -hmm. to different states I know mm -hmm. that's right put it out there in the atmosphere mm -hmm. speak life that's right let it happen. Well, because I think sometimes people get like get discouraged. Like even I tell people all the time, I was like, I get in the slump where I can't write anything or I can't come up with an idea. Mm -hmm, and I'm like, mm -hmm. I need somebody to give me an idea. Like mm -hmm. I need a creative hook. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so it's right, like, it would right. be nice to have events that were centered around what I wanted to do that somebody could give me advice like, hey, if you're in a slump, these are the next steps you should take to get out of that slump. And I'm mm -hmm. a big big reader like I read all the time I probably mm -hmm. like if I'm not doing something else I'm probably reading a book like I'll send the kids out to play <laughs> and I'm like I am watching you but I'm reading this too what were some of the uh, books or resources that pushed you forward in accomplishing your goals well, for me, let me see if I can go back. She over got it in her phone. That's all I my do. notebooks are on my phone, by the way, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I keep my Google Docs, my calendar, and my Nook on my phone. And I oh, will your delete phone. your picture <laughs> if it takes up too much space so that I can keep all my stuff on the phone. And I know for me, okay. it was a Year of Yes by Shonda Rhimes really changed my um, uh perspective on mm -hmm. how I was conducting myself and getting to meet people that was a really that played a really big role mm -hmm. in how I was mm -hmm. and so what was it for you I'm trying to think what else did I read recently one of um one of the books I've been reading was uh by Thelma Sample Marketing Made Easy mm -hmm. okay I mean she breaks this book down on how you should market your business and see, and it really has been um, helpful into how I post stuff on social media. And I'm so glad. And she was giving the book away for I think I might have paid five dollars for it. Okay, we wrote that down for the I'm electronic the copy. Book. And I'm good for electronic <laughs> copy because you can take it anywhere. People are like, oh, I want to. I do like a good old fashioned book in my hand, but if I'm like, I really want to reference something right away, I will pull up my phone. Like the book said this. Mm hmm. And I think I also read this as like completely totally different, but it helped me to center myself was in the meantime by Iala Van Zandt. 
and it really mm-hmm. was like mm-hmm. you, hey, I love her. <laughs> that's that's a good one. Yes. It's that's a, a good really one. good book, and it has yes. a workbook to go with it. And so I started to read the book and get it so that you could see. It's like one of those things that if you get stuck someplace, it kind of tells you how to crawl. About it's about relationships, but use your imagination and apply it to your business yeah, mindset. That's right. And so did you find your book, Kelly? Yeah, mm-hmm. there's one that I just recently found was by Sharon um, Sharon Beeson. Uh, who's out of New York is called the Entrepreneur Startup Game Plan. I love it. I love what she brings. I like her energy. See, her yeah. energy is so good, and it's 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 like I don't know if I can say this on here or not. It's like so like so like badass for a woman, and I and I like that. When I did read that, you, know? you were a bad. Oh my god! Watch your mouth. I know Jazz Gitter. She said it. I said it because I, I had I had said because. It is because a lot of times as, as women, we get the short end of the stick because you're a woman. You shouldn't be able to do this. You shouldn't be able to do that. You need to be in the home. You need to be raising your kids. You need to be able to push your forward kids. You need to be motivating your kids. Well, what about me? I got to put some time mm-hmm. on me, too. I and do. That's the truth. So there you guys. You guys have had a successful woman giving you what they are currently reading. You guys should pick up those books. Nobody asked for any endorsements. I'm just saying, like, I read right. and I read because I want I respect my craft. And so in order to uh, help better uh, facilitate my craft, I have to know what's going on. And so I have to read stuff to encourage that. But can you drop us the information about how we can reach out to you and the information yeah. for the event, please? So you guys can reach out to us. Um, at www.b as in boy, n as in nancy, g as in george, conference.info. Um, and at that, on, when you go into that portal, you'll see everything that we have to offer for this conference. And you can buy your tickets there through Eventbrite. It'll take you to a link there. And like I said, right now we have a special going on f- up until Sunday, September 3rd. Is that the right date? That's Sunday? September 3rd. And that's a uh, buy one, get one. So, <laughs> For when it asks you, when you're going on the checkout screen to check out, you put in BOGO, B-O-G-O, and it'll ask you the information and, you know, it'll forward over to us that you purchased your tickets. So I would recommend that you get your tickets this weekend because seating is limited. Yes. And we are at, we're yes, at that and Sweet I 16 so spot. so hard to try to figure out that feature. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jazz so I need put to a lot of work. So. <laughs> so I'm excited for you guys in this conference. If you could leave us with any lasting words for the person that's like, I'm might purchase my ticket I might go to the conference what are you telling them to get them to this conference be there get there if you want to help yourself grow if you want to see your business go to another level if you want to connect up with others that are moving forward progressively this is the conference that you need to be at be there get there and if you have an issue with that we do have some people that are sponsoring some of those who aren't able to you know cover their tickets so call us reach out to us we're on social media all the time you got two people to reach out to not just one you got jazz you can find her at jasmine tuggles you can find her at what's your (laughs) instagram monica jazz (laughs) i'm gonna shout out all of it so they can find you um instagram baby j2027 and then we have Instagram page at Indele Hair for the hairline. You have that. There's information there. Um, my Instagram moniker at Lee Esther's Girls 2. That's there. Um, we have a business page on Facebook, Indele Hair by Lee Esther's Girls. You have the um, uh, business, networking groove, business Networking and Grooves event page on Facebook. So you got a ton of ways to get in touch with us. So there's no excuse. Well, I want to thank you guys for coming on today. You guys, they gave us a lot of information. And hotties, I'm going to leave you with this. Not a little tip or a little note, but I'm going to let you know to go over and follow my Instagram page at Just One Hot Mom right. because there will be a project launching this September. And you want to be on that page to figure out or to find out what's going on. Guess what, hotties? You've been tuned in and you've been elevated. Talk to you soon. <laughs>